All right, so the step I just did for my kill YD phase was that I selected all the empty space around my painting layer, selected the inverse, and then duplicated that shape from my gray layer, right? So I got, got a gray silhouette of my painting and then just put my painting on top of it. That is my flat painting, right? The next step would be to build some of the tones on top of that. So I'm at this step now, you know, and it's more complicated than the Kiwi, all the different colors and the light reflections and all of that. But then I can start softening and adding detail and refining it. But honestly, this is the most important step, like just building 100% opaque paint to make your image. And so that already kind of shows me where this painting's going. And if I'm a concept artist and I don't like it at this point, I move on to something else. If I don't like the new Star Wars Stormtrooper uh, uniform design that I'm painting, I'm going to move on to just a new, a new approach. And I do like this and I want to return to it, but I want to show you how to set it up again. So at this point, if you have not saved yet, go to in Photoshop, go to File, Save As. And I'm going to use my name and then Assignment 9. And then this is my portrait and this is Nina Simone. Wonderful mu musician. Save to the desktop as a Photoshop file. Now, I'm going to start over. And this time, <laughs> I'm going to use the same kind of format. It's going to be 11 by 14 inches. But it's going to be a landscape format instead of a portrait format. I think. Let me see. OK, now instead of the portrait, I'm going to do my friend Kathy's lovely new puppy, which is a corgi, right? And I want it to be a little bit more dynamic. Let's see. So I want it at a slight angle. Remember, you have to show the animal from head to toe. And from head to toe can be tricky to find an angle that you really like, right? So I like this one. And then if I rasterize it, instead of um, taking my sketch and then warping that, I can actually, because animals are more forgiving, I can warp this a little bit. to make him chubbier or to, to make the curve a little bit more appealing. Now, obviously there's some missing information there. So I have some other references, like a cute little kitten for some fur. And so I'm gonna set up all of my, my references. And I've given myself a lot of space, right? I'm going to set that one on top of that one. There we go. Let me shrink this one down a little bit more. And I can be a little bit freer because I'm not trying to match likeness. I'm just trying to match the species. <laughs> so these are my references. I'm going to change my background to call it blank white canvas, which seems like busy work to you and most of you aren't doing it, but there's a reason. Because if you change the name of your background layer, then you can actually lock it for real. And that's important because otherwise you will end up painting on it and regretting it. So locking your blank layer, locking your reference layer so you don't accidentally paint on the empty space in them. And then working on top of that, we're going to do a sketch layer. I'll show you how to make a new brush just in a slightly different way. Now, before I make, before I do the sketch, I want to make a brush. So I'm going to actually open a new Photoshop file instead of doing it within the one like I did with Nina Simone. 
And this Photoshop file, I want it to just be pretty basic. I want it to be, let's do um, 700 by 700 pixels. Doesn't matter the resolution as long as it's 700 by 700 pixels. I change to my default black and white. I use my brush and I'm gonna go ahead and use my brush, the one I've been using to make a new brush. But because this is a fur texture, I'm gonna leave a lot of openings in it, a lot of white space in the brush. Okay, so this brush is pretty different than what I've been doing, right? So how do I turn it into a brush? I go to edit, define brush preset, and then I'm gonna name it FA18 Carl, and I'm gonna call it um, Corgi brush. And now I have that brush, which is actually a lot more complicated than my last one. Okay, now I don't even need to save that. It's already um, in my brush settings, but I do need to set the brush the individual settings because if I just use it this way it's very clunky. So I go to window brush settings. Shape dynamics is the main one. I want it to be based on pin pressure. I want quite a bit of size jitter. Maybe a slightly larger minimum diameter. I want quite a bit of angle jitter but not so much that I can't control the, the illusion of it. I want quite a bit of roundness. And then I'm going to build in some texture. Mostly working with the depth. All right. So now, very nice. I have this nice soft brush, just like so many that you can download online. I'm going to zoom in. I can use the navigator. I'm going to make it smaller. And I'm going to give myself a very easy to see color. I like to use the kind of bright cyan. And just like I did for the human head, I'm going to try to find my basic shapes for this little puppy corgi. So a lot of wedges and triangles. Notice I'm just being really loose and sketchy. It doesn't help to really do a, a clean line work solution because you want there to be a lot of energy in your painting but i do want to kind of understand the anatomy of the of the animal so i can make it look believable so where the shoulders are which way the spine's going where the leg connects with the hips now this is very different than what's called rotoscoping rotoscoping is if i just used my digital brushes and painted right over the photo like enlarge the photo to be high res and then just paint it right over it. Here I'm just sketching, just like I would with photo reference, to just get used to the, um, the subject, kind of introduce myself to the, the dynamics of the subject. So now that I've done that, I can take that sketch layer and move it and then transform it make it nice and big and I've already warped it but if I wanted to I could transform it and warp it again and kind of tweak it it's got all the proportions it needs in it but I really want that kind of really heavy arc okay so now I'm going to set that at a lower opacity maybe about 30 percent but above everything else and I'm going to lock it and then underneath the sketch layer, I'm going to make my 100% opaque base paint layer. So this is starts with local color, and corgis are obviously two-toned. And I use my new brush, and I make it bigger at 100% opacity, just like I did with Nina Simone. 
and I start stealing colors. A little smaller than that. Making sure I get lights and darks. But isn't it interesting, when I pick the highlight of the photo, on white, it looks gray. And that's important. You are deciding what these local colors are. And this is the kill whitey phase. You know, really just fighting to fill up all this space. And a way to do that is to duplicate your blank canvas and fill it with 50% gray. Some people even like to go to black, especially if they're doing concept designs. And then lock that so you don't accidentally paint on that layer. And that really helps you to start filling this in. And now that, that gray doesn't look so dark because it's within the realm of these highlights. Now, if you don't feel you have enough color options, and I really don't feel I do, I want to bring in some other color reference. I like the blue shadow on this one. And then that made me think of this pop artist I like, this West Coast pop artist named Wayne Tebow. And so when I looked up Wayne Tebow in dog paintings, I got his hot dog series, which I think will work beautifully because it's those warm colors, but it's those really blue shadows. And I definitely want that. So I'm not only going to paint the dog, I'm going to paint the shadow underneath the dog. But I need these color references and I can lock them. Luckily, they're smart layers. So I, I can't uh, accidentally paint on them anyway without rasterizing them first. But I just stay on my brush. And you see how he's got this nice defined shadow there? I'm going to paint that in with blue. And that will help me show all of the fur texture. And see how my, my uh, painting layers are above my color reference layer. So if I need to, I can just paint right on top of that color reference. But this is important that it's 100% opaque. So don't spend a lot of time trying to get the perfect color. You're just trying to build up kind of a temperature palette, different approaches. Now, just like the, the discipline of drawing, painting has a lot to do with gesture and confidence and putting something down and then adapting it, working with it. So that's why this is often called speed painting. You try not to judge yourself. You're not being overly technical. It's the fun part of digital painting, I think. You're just trying to fill up space and find your colors and your techniques along the way. Customizing the brush gives you a lot of, of immediate kind of personality. But then obviously all the long work of rendering things out and defining things, especially if you want something that looks more representational or even all the way to photorealistic, that just takes time and zooming in. So my biggest lesson in this early phase of your painting, maybe for at least the first hour that you work on it, don't allow yourself to zoom in at all. Don't zoom in on the eyes. Don't zoom in on the paws. No matter how tempting it is, just force yourself to work from a distance. Look at the whole thing and try to get it all covered up. Because otherwise you become just really inefficient. And we tend to overpaint the things that we stare at the longest. So if you spend a long time doing the eye and putting all the highlights in it, you'll never be able to bring up the rest of the painting to that level. In fact, I've completely avoided the face <laughs> up to this point. I'm kind of proud of myself for that. Makes sense. Yeah. Don't get sucked in by the cuteness. It's all just about shapes and edges. And the, the better you observe them, 